Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad. Listen, um, the, the S-U-N is not shiny. It's cloudy. It's an overcast. But how many of you know that uh, the S-O-N? Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus, the light of the world. He ever shines. We're going to give him praise today. Hallelujah. We're coming to you live from the United Missionary Baptist Church here in the city of Cleveland, Ohio, uh, 9312 Union Avenue, where we're building God's kingdom one soul at a time. And we're so thankful for the ones who have gathered with us here in the sanctuary. We thank you for uh, watching us live, amen, on, um, on Facebook or on YouTube. We give God praise for you. We're not going to labor the time, but we want to just pause and just give God thanks for another day. Father, we thank you and we praise you for not just another day, but another opportunity, another chance, another session, another season, another year, another hour. Oh God, we thank you for this privilege of being able to gather in corporate worship. We ask right now, Father, that first of all, we yield to your will and to your way. There are some things we've said and done that haven't brought you any glory. So we ask you for forgiveness right now. Please, Lord. Then, oh God, we ask you to just bless us right now as we prepare our hearts and our minds for, for service, Lord, that, that you will touch someone who needs to be touched today. Have your way. Yes, Lord. Lift up now and now here. Strengthen broken hearts. Speak a word, oh God. You know our situation. You know our circumstances. And Father, we'll forever give your name all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory is yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. At this time, we're so thankful to have our minister of music with us. Amen. We're going to put you in the hands of Brother Deion Davis, Dr. Pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Lord, 
that as I decrease, you'll increase. As I sit down, you'll stand up in me. Yes. Yes. Let your word go forth.
essential workers. Sure that you will agree with me when I say that our communities, our society, and the world are in a state of turmoil. Here we are, almost a year and a half of a global pandemic, and finally it appears that we're nearing the end. And over the past year, there have been folk whose jobs have ended, there have been those who were allowed to work from home. There are those who had to work reduced schedules. And then there are those who were deemed as essential workers. Yeah. Police are essential workers. Mm -hmm. Environment are essential workers. Teachers have been deemed essential workers. And all in all, adjustments had to be made. And accommodations were modified because these jobs were deemed needed, mandatory, and essential to the continuity of life. And even in the midst of pandemic and crisis, we've also had to deal with poverty. Yes. Poverty that even existed before COVID-19. In the midst of this pandemic, we continue to deal with race issues that existed before COVID-19. Yeah. In the midst of the pandemic, we continue to deal with health crisis that existed before COVID-19. We're dealing with crime at an all-time high as we did before COVID-19. Well. We had to adjust to a weakened economy that existed before COVID-19. 19, and the list goes on and on and on, and it appears as if all hell has broken out in our midst. And as devastating as these facts are, the real tragedy, my brothers and sisters, is that in the midst of all of this chaos, in the midst of all of this uproar, in the midst of all of this uncertainty, it appears as if the church has become impotent or in many instances non-existent. Mm. The sad reality is where many churches made tough decisions of staying open during this crisis. Uh, they made a tough choice. Some stayed in the building. Others found alternative ways to continue ministry on Facebook and, and on YouTube. Others um, had a parking lot ministry and many threw in the tile and closed up all together. Well. Somehow those of us who say that we love the Lord have lost our zeal to bring Christ to the forefront of the world. But in the text Jesus says, upon this rock I will build my church. Hallelujah. How many of you know that uh, Jesus is the cornerstone of the church? And let me tell you, when we take a look at the church, uh, he has built uh, uh, quite a church. Uh, now this I mean, and I've been saying for years, that on every street corner, you can find a church uh, in every major city. Doesn't matter what neighborhood you're in, uh, you may see schools, uh, you may see grocery stores, uh, you may see Banks and hallelujah, uh, schools close up and banks close up and stores close up, but there's one institution that never closes, and that's the church. Amen. And be that as it may, uh, that poses a problem. The problem, Brother Davis, is that uh, many of the churches, although their buildings uh, display symbols of Christ, uh, 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 many of them have become shrines, uh, or, or many of these have become ministries uh, that elevate the men uh, that are leading them. In other words, far too often many are building churches to serve their own purposes and have not allowed Christ uh, to be the center of the church. My Lord. But I want to caution the church today that a uh, church that's like that is one that will entertain gossip rather than preach the gospel. A church like that is one that prides itself in filling seats rather than saving souls. A church like that is one that teaches and preaches a safe gospel rather than a saving gospel. What do I mean? We want to preach safe stuff, stuff that don't cross the line, uh, things that don't offend anybody. We want to preach the safe stuff, the sweet stuff, but how can you know we need to uh, 
uh, uh, put the, 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 the rubber to the road and lay it on the line and let folk know they're on their way to hell in a handbasket and the way you live it is contrary to the word of God. Amen. But I just believe in my spirit that God is seeking those who have an understanding of what the real church is and that Christ is the head of the church. Let me tell you something. We got to stop elevating uh, folk and, and elevating positions. Uh, let me tell you something. Jesus is the head uh, of the church. Amen. The church is where Christ is the head and surrenders itself to the authority of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so when I look at the state of the world, when I look at the state of this nation, I believe that God is looking for those of us who are serious about building uh, the real church of Christ. Uh, the purpose of the church is to serve Jesus in everything that is done in and of the on behalf of the church from the preaching of, of, of the gospel to even the cleaning of the floor. How many of you know it all has to be Christ-centered? In other words, whatever your duty is, uh, whatever your position is, uh, it ought not be to elevate yourself uh, right. or pump yourself up, but it right. ought to lift you. Jesus said, and I, I from the earth I'll draw all men unto me. Well, and so as believers, we must understand the purpose of the church, but not only the purpose, we have to understand the relevance of the church, yeah. which brings me to the text. Jesus says, uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, he was in essence saying that the church ought to be able to take on the world without the world taking over the church. And can I tell you, we have become so lackadaisy in our faith. We have become so, so, so lackadaisical in our stance, uh, trying to fit in, uh, right. trying to get approval from everybody, right. trying to uh, get people to come to church, uh, trying to draw the church until we begin to look just like the world. But can I tell you, there ought to be something different about the body of Christ. We ought to look different. We ought to speak different. We ought to walk different. We ought to act different. There should be something different about us. The world can set the standards for us. We set the standards for the world. That's right. That's right. Oh, yes, yes. We got to realize that we, as Christians, are essential workers. Well, as Christians, we should be encouraging folks to turn to the church so they can turn their problems over to the one who is really able to solve them. And let me tell you, uh, the church ought to be that pillar in the community where folk can come and get all of their needs met. There ought to be a social action uh, ministry at the church. Uh, folk need to know how to go and apply for programs and things like that. You ought to be able to come and knock on the church door for that. There ought to be a hunger center in the church. Uh, we got a whole lot of folk hungry and we better see them standing in the line in front of a bar passing out meals rather than feeding the church uh, when we're providing. Well, well. I mean, you know that Jesus is still in the miracle working business and it's time to stop playing church and start being the real church uh, that he's calling on today. We have to be uh, the essential workers. Well, yes. And so what is it that makes us essential? I'm glad you asked. Here are a few things that makes us essential. First of all, uh, uh, we're essential because uh, uh, everybody else is telling the world what they want to hear. Yeah, everybody else is telling the world what they think they want to hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we have to be the one. We are essential because we teach and preach the truth. Amen. Too many folk are suffering. Suffering in society, and make no mistake about it, uh, the suffering that they're experiencing is not just because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Folk are suffering not just because of poverty. Folk are suffering not just because of crime, but many are suffering because of their lack of knowledge of God's word. Let me tell you something. When you know what the word of God says, uh, when you know what the word of God says, you are or who you are, You'll be able to face any challenge. Let me tell you, you need to know the truth. You need to know that the word of God has the answer to all of life's problems. Man. But however we've been taught and programmed to believe that politicians and political parties and big business and government will save us. But can I tell you, the word of God teaches us that you've got to know that it is Christ who saves us everything that we need, every uh, thing that we go through, there's an answer for it in the word of yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. 
know the truth. You know that a doctor can't uh, uh, write you off. Or, Hallelujah. I thank God for my job, but my job is not a source. It's a resource. Amen. Jesus is the source of my supply. The Bible says a cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. We've been programmed well. to believe that we got to look to somebody in Washington, D.C. or look to somebody downtown, but how I many you know the word of God tells the truth? And the truth is you can look to the hills up from which comes your help, knowing that all your help comes from the Lord. Amen. And listen, we are the ones who carry that message. Amen. That's why we are essential workers. Amen. Oh yes, we gotta teach That's good. the truth. Yeah. Not only does uh, uh, the fact that we carry the truth makes us essential, mm -hmm. but guess what else? We are essential because we have power. Uh -huh. ah, power, power. Uh, in Acts 1, Jesus, uh, before he tells the disciples that he will soon leave them, he told them, he said, after I'm gone, you're going to receive power. Yes. And when he said that, he wasn't talking about uh, mental power. He wasn't talking about financial power or political power or even physical power. But he was talking about spiritual power. Power. Well, and in order to be essential, we need to understand the nature of the problems that we're seeking to solve. We got to know that everything is spiritual. I don't care what it looks like in the natural. You got to realize that there's a spiritual battle that's going on. And, and no matter what your natural eye reveals to you, you got to trust that every time the enemy raises his ugly head, uh, that the angels of God uh, are still around you and fighting on your behalf. Uh, oh yes, it's, we have to be essential. Uh, Paul says it like this in Ephesians 6 and 12. He said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, and against spiritual wickedness uh, in high places. Uh, I come out here to let somebody know uh, that you need to stop fighting that man or that woman that's next to you. You gotta stop bickering and going that was a with them, honey, you better put on your spiritual warfare and know that it's the devil that you're fighting about, and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Oh, oh, we got to fight spiritual. Yes. Yes. Many of the problems that we confront well. are spiritual in nature. Yes, and we have to understand the spiritual problems. Need to be fought with spiritual power. That's right. And the Holy Ghost is the only one That's who right. can give us that power that we need to fight off the enemy and his schemes. Uh, the problems that many are facing is that they've been trying to fight all their problems uh, on their own uh, with their own power. But can I tell you, it's time for you uh, to allow the Holy Ghost to come in. Uh, and how many of you know that if you stand still, uh, the Lord will fight? Your battle, huh? yes. And let me tell you something else. Uh, you can't control the Holy Spirit. Uh, instead, the Holy Spirit uh, is what controls you. Uh, you. Listen, you can't take on the world without the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, you can't take on issues uh, without the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why every time you wake up in the morning, uh, you ought to turn to the Lord. Uh, first of all, thank Him for waking you up. Uh, Thank him for your right mind. Thank him for health and strength. But then you ought to begin to confess your sin. Lord, I've done some things. I've said some things. I've gone some places. I've seen them. Forgive me, Lord. But before your feet hit the ground, you ought to ask him, give me the power. Give me the strength. Give me the wisdom to go out to my day. How many of you know you need the power of the Holy Ghost? That's good preaching. Oh, yes, power, power. Show sure enough. Yeah. We can't control the Holy Spirit. Mm -mm. Spirit controls us. Amen. And you are essential. Yes. Because you carry that power. Yes. In other words, when you enter into a place, no matter what's going on, because you're filled with the Holy Ghost, <laughs> you have power and authority. <laughs> you can walk into a situation yes. and changes and yes. you never wonder why when you show up, uh, Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. You're essential. 
That's good. Yeah. You're essential because you have the truth, the real truth. Yes, yes. You're essential yes. because you have power. Yes. And then the last point I want to make mm. is that uh, in order to be essential, if you're really essential, you have to be reachable. Mm. Now, what do I mean by that? Mm. If doctors and, and, and nurses and, and the medical staff are essential, you have to be able to get to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If teachers are essential, mm -hmm. children or students have to be able to get to the classroom, whether physically or virtually. Mm -hmm. If you're essential, yeah. firemen are essential. You ought to be able to call 911. That's how 911 works. Yeah. It's essential. Mm. Well, let me tell you something. Mm. And I'm almost through. But in the midst of pandemic and crisis, if ever there were a time for the doors of the church to be open, it's right now. Yeah. Now, before you start shouting, I want you to know that you have to be here. Mm. And I'm in total agreement that social distancing is a must. A mask is a must. Yeah. Well, closing the church building is a necessity. Mm. But how many you know that the building is not the church? Tell me right. The church is essential, but the building is not the church. Yeah. And one of the biggest problems with Christians today is that most are satisfied with just going to the church building. Yeah. They're satisfied with showing up to the church. On Sunday morning, and for the past year, many have been have not been to church. Huh? Well, you saw this set well, because so many well, feel that they are just satisfied with coming right. to the church building. Uh -huh. For the past year and almost a year and a half, you got a whole lot of folk who haven't been to church, right. and it's not because the building was closed. That's right. It's not because ministries have been suspended. That's right. It's because for so many, their only relationship with God is hinged on what they do in this building. And truth be told, when they were able to come to the building, right. they didn't do it then. Right. And they did it, they didn't do it with sincerity. Right. When they did it, they didn't do it to glorify God. Right. They did it to glorify themselves. Right. And listen, I'm not mad and I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Some really feel that they're doing all that is required of them just by showing up on Sunday morning. Right. And as a result, when the church doors was open, they show up religiously every Sunday. Uh -huh. But they were late. They come in after everything was over with. Yeah. They come in after uh, Sunday school. Come in after the offering. Yeah. Come in after altar call. Yeah. Then they so tired, they sleep on the preacher. Help me, Holy Ghost. You're right. You're right. They You're never right. attended an afternoon program. You're right. Never attended prayer meeting. My, my, never my. came to Bible study. My, they were just Sunday morning folk filling up a seat. Amen. And if you don't believe me, all you got to do is take a look around. Well, They're the same ones who don't watch the live broadcast. Well, the same ones who don't watch YouTube. Wow. The same ones who won't pick up the phone and dial in for prayer. The same ones that don't walk home for Bible study. Wow.
Folk are going to have to get out of membership. Right. And get in to fellowship. That's right. But not only are folk going to have to come out of membership and get in to fellowship. Uh -huh. But the text says, Jesus tells us to go and make disciples of other nations. Yeah. And let me allow and slow down and tell you what that means. That means that you have to go out of the church. Uh -huh. Oh yes, the word go replies and implies that it's action or movement. Go is the opposite of stay. Uh -huh. And for so many, they didn't have a problem with coming to the church building, uh -huh. but they would just stay in the church building. Uh -huh. Talk about evangelizing the community. Oh no. Talking about going, knocking on doors and leaving talk. No. They want to just stay up. But the word go is the opposite of stay. Uh -huh. And for many, instead of going out of the building, they'd rather stay in the building and do nothing. And I don't know about you, but the God I serve is bigger than a stained glass four wall room. Hallelujah. The God I serve is bigger than any church building that we can ever build. How many of you know we serve an omnipresent God? everywhere at all times and we can't confine God to these little bitty sanctuaries, these little bitty buildings. We need to know that the Bible says when two or three are gathered in my name, he'll be in the midst. That means you can have church at the bus stop. You can have church in the lunchroom at work. You can have church on the telephone. You can have church at the grocery store. You can have church at the barber shop. You can have church at the beauty shop. We need to get our minds in the right perspective. Yes. yes. And what we're really trying to say my, my, my. is that the church, we are essential workers. Uh -huh. And the church is not the building. Mm -hmm. The church is us. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, Peter. This is the message that Jesus was conveying to Peter. When he said, upon this rock, mm -hmm. I will build my church. Therefore, we are to take Jesus everywhere. Uh -huh. We can't continue to stay inside of yeah. this building. We got to go out and reclaim families. Amen. We got to go out and take our youth back. Amen. We got to go out and regain and, re and take back our community. It's not about membership, but it's all about discipleship. Amen. And there's a difference between the two. Well, let me tell you, a member will only talk about how good their church is. Yeah. A member will only talk about whether or not their preacher can preach or not. Uh -huh. A church member will tell you that either my choir can sing or the choir can't sing. But let me tell you about a disciple. A disciple don't tell you about the church, but the disciple tells you about Jesus. And so I come down here to let you know that yes, sir, we can weather the storm of this pandemic. Well, yeah. and though things are beginning to turn around, we're not totally there yet. That's right. We're not totally out of the woods yet. That's right. We're not all the way back yet. That's right. And because of that, as a church, we got to continue to be vigilant. We are essential. And there's work needs to be done. Yes. Not business as usual. Right. Stop asking me uh, when are we going to open the doors? Uh, <laughs> let me tell you, the church was never closed. Right. Uh, instead, you ought to ask yourself, uh, right. when are you going to start serving? Uh, when are you going to start doing something? Uh, stop worrying about when you can come back in the sanctuary and put on a fashion show. Uh, on. Stop worrying about uh, when you can come back in the sanctuary and play church up. Uh,
this up. Don't fix it up. If you see addiction up, don't deliver it up. Jesus said, upon this rock, I build my church up. You got to go up. But when you go up, you got to remember who's the gender of your power. You got to remember who you're serving. You got to remember who called you up. Yes, 
right. That's right. I work every day. That's right. Five days a week. Yeah. More than eight hours a day. So sure did. Huh. All over the, the, the church community, June, first, second of June seems to be the target. We get back in. Mm -hmm. We coming back in. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Some of us never stop. Amen. That's right. Help me Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. You know why you don't stop? Because you're essential. Amen. You're essential. Amen. And so, yes, protocol needs to be established. Yes, we need to do some things to adjust some things. But how many of you know the work never ceased and the work had never stopped? Yeah, yeah. We need to know that we are essential. And that means that uh, because you are essential, mm -hmm. the word of God still goes out. Mm -hmm. You have to make a choice. If you're going to be able to get on your phone or your tablet or your computer, <laughs> stop talking about you can't use technology because you're on Facebook. And if you're on Facebook, you can get on a Facebook Live. All right. The church is on the parking lot. <laughs> to me, that was the best alternative. Because yeah. uh -huh. you can come together in fellowship and to spread out. But you got some folks talking about, oh, I can't come and sit in the sun. Yep. Well, baby, if you're in the church, in the building, you under the sun. All right. The S O N is just a matter of perspective. Right. But stop making an excuse. Yes. Yes. Heaven is the head. But every other way I can speak for me. Yes. Because at the end of the day, yeah. uh, whatever happens here, yeah. doesn't matter who did it, yeah. doesn't matter who said it. Yeah. I know that the church belongs to Christ. Amen. But the world that's looking here got my name all over it. Yeah. And so I wouldn't about to risk no pandemic and no spread and folk and sick. And so we had to make some changes. Amen. And some adjustments. Amen. And yes, I'm still listening to the CDC and Amen. following CDC guidelines, but guess what? I'm still moving under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And until I receive confirmation from Him, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. You have to just Decide how essential you are. Stop making excuses. You want to come to church? The church is here. Come on. You want Bible study? Bible study has been going on. Come on. Amen. Amen. You're right. You're right. You're right. Making excuses. Amen. And I can be, I can be foolish listening to y'all and then. I'll be thrown under the bus later on. Amen. Answering and folks talking about how oh, all of my past is that. Yep. Honey, <laughs> I'm about to let the Holy Ghost do it. Amen. Amen. That's the one. We're going to be in here. We're going to have masks on. Amen. I don't care what the world is doing. Amen. We're going to social distance. Amen. Until I receive confirmation from the Holy Ghost. Otherwise. Now, if you're not ashamed, if you're not ashamed, well, well. give God some praise. Give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody, somebody's watching. Amen. Somebody needs to know that this pandemic, this crisis that we're in, is is overwhelming. It's yeah. real. And mercy. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Yeah, folk are getting shots. And mercy. Yes, the numbers are going down. But guess what? Folk are still being infected. Amen. And they're still dying. Amen. Folk are still on ventilators. Amen. And so, uh, this is real. And I don't come in here with no uh, hocus pocus. I'm trying to appear so deep to you that, that it's because I love the Lord and know the Lord that this is not real, but because I know the Lord and love the Lord, 
I want you to know him. Amen. And I want you to be saved. Amen. And you need to know no matter what medical science is doing, no matter what the CDC and the government guidelines are, you still need a savior. Yes. And I want to give you an opportunity to receive Christ right now. That you know that you're saved from whatever happens. Mm -hmm. Paul said, listen, to live is Christ, die is gain. Amen. But the key is Christ. Right. So if you're watching, where we are, if you have never accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, bow your head and close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me. Lord, I am a sinner. But I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sin. I believe God raised him from the dead on the third day. Come into my heart, Lord. Fill me with your spirit that I might live the rest of my days for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you pray that prayer, find yourself a Bible preaching or Bible teaching church where you can develop your spiritual gifts where you can learn more about Jesus as your Savior, and where you might be able to disciple and help somebody else along the way. Getting ready to leave. We give God praise. Amen. We give glory and honor for being so good to us. And as we uh, continue to navigate our way through this pandemic, as we continue to, to, um, to do things that we are called to do, um, we do want to also remind you that um, as the weather has changed and the climate is um, getting much better, amen, that we're here on Sundays and Lord say the same weather permitting, we will be out on the lot, amen, um, praise on the lot, in a couple weeks it'll be grass on the lot, in about three weeks, guess what, Deacon we're going to have pops on the lot. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Remind you that we're in prayer every Tuesday night on the prayer line. Call him up. Amen. Tell him what you want. Amen. I have studied with Lady Dicks every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Yeah. And then we're here for worship. We thank those who tune in weekly on our uh, Facebook Live and on the YouTube Live. Um, and even those who. Um, Catch the reboot on um, on the radio station. Walking in favor with Pastor Dix, we thank God for you. We thank you for those who have continued to sow a seed into this ministry. And if this ministry has been a blessing to you and you want to be a blessing to it, you may do so uh, by um, downloading the Giveify app. We are United Missionary Baptist Church, Cleveland, Ohio. To the members, want to remind you to continue to pay your tithes and. Um, your offering, we thank God for you. Amen. And as we continue to seek the Lord's will, I believe we're going to continue to reap the Lord's benefits. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Having said that, Father, we thank you and we praise you. Yeah. For what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard, we thank you for your word, your written word and your preached word. Now help us, Lord, to apply the word to our lives that we might be drawn closer to you. As we leave this place, but never your presence, may the love of God, the grace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest through and abide with all of us yes. now and forevermore. Let every heart say amen, amen, amen. amen. As you go, tell the world. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell them about his love. As you go, tell the world, God bless you.